Welcome to our Elemental Loop tutorial where everything you need to know about loop is explained. This is the part 2 of our tutorial series and if you're here to see the part 1, please endeavor to do so. The link to the part 1 will be added in the description of this video. In the part 1, we made mention of the two ways to which you can access the Elemental Loop widget and make use of them, either through the Team Builder or through the widget. And also, we're able to create a loop item from scratch and also we'll see how we can add that particular loop into any part of our website easily. So now in this tutorial, we'll be talking about the product loop and then we're going to create a product loop from scratch. So without further delay, let's dive in. So in our Elemental Canvas area, the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to come over here, let's add a structure, okay? And then let's give it a VH value of 100, okay? And then let's come here, let's just find content to the center. Now we're going to come over here under this widget area here. We're going to search for the loop widget and then we're going to drag and drop the loop grid and drop it here. Okay. So now you can see under the content, we have the layout. There is a query. Then there is a pagination. I've already talked about the query and the pagination and even the layout in our previous um, tutorial video, in our previous video. However, in this one here, we're just going to do something slight different, which is we're going to come over here under the layout. We're going to select product because the loop we want to create is for product and not post. All right. So now that we've done that, the next thing here, which is to choose a template, the situation where we've already created a template. This is where we can come over here and then type the template name and search for that template and then inside the template here, which I've already shown you in our previous video. So if you haven't seen that, you can just revisit the previous video and remind yourself about that. Okay. So now that we, we, we've gotten that cleared out, all right, now this is the button we're going to make use of here. Either this one here, create a template button here, or this create a template button. Whichever one all performs the same action. So we're just going to click on the create a template, and then we're going to click on save, and it's going to load and give an open a section for us where we can create our product loop. Okay, as you can see right here, just as we did, in our previous uh, tutorial, we're going to come over to the settings here and we're going to retitle our loop. So we're going to call this loop, uh, let's see, product one loop. And let's just clean this out. Okay. And then there is no need for us to come over to set the previous settings, but in the situation where you want, you can also do that because we've already set our query type to be product so this previous setting is when you want to preview a particular product you can just come here and search for that particular product name and it to come over and you can preview that particular product okay so now that we've done that uh we're just gonna come back here okay now you can see under the recommended area you can notice that the id widgets here are quite different from that of the post loop when we are creating the post loop, you can see now that we'll have the add to cart, we have the product price, the short description, the meta description, and, and so on. Same thing is applicable to that of the post, which we discussed already. So without wasting more time going over these widgets here, I'm just gonna we're just gonna create our own product loop from scratch. Okay. So what we're gonna do here is just gonna come over here. Let's add a container to here. Now, in this structure here, we're going to come over here and then we can either make use of the featured image. We can drag and drop the featured image and it will pull the most recent featured image for us. You, you might want to make use of this, but I wouldn't be making use of this because when you hover on this image, you do not have the ability to make it, um, you know, to add some, some hover effect to the image. It's just static and it doesn't make sense since we are building a, a, an e-commerce website. So we need something to happen while we hover on our image. So I'm just going to delete this featured image. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to search for call to action. And I'm going to drag and drop this right here. Now for this call to action here, I'm going to come to the content content and I will delete this. And I'll delete the description and also the button. So we're left with just the image. And then I'm going to come over to the image. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come here over and then select this dynamic tag and set it to the featured image. So it's going to pull the featured image for us. As you can see, when you hover, you can see it already gives us an effect. 
Okay, so we'll go to the style option now. So what we're going to do is just going to come over here and then we're going to edit the image and let's give the image a height. So let's increase this height and so we'll have something like this, let's say 330. Let's leave it at 330 so we'll have something like this. All right, so now that we've done that, uh, we can also come over to the hover effect and we can set how we want the hover animation to be like, which is a wonderful effect, you know, going to the file that we're building an e-commerce site. So you can either set it to zoom in or zoom out or zoom out depending on what you want or what works for you. I'm going to leave it at zoom in, okay? And then uh, there are some other features where you can add here on overlay, color, and all that stuff. We'll be doing that in depth. So the next thing we're going to do here, we're just going to come over here and we're going to drag uh, a container and drop it right below this. And then we're going to head to the container here and then we're going to come down for the gap. We're going to set the gap to zero. So there is no gap within it. And for this inner container here, we'll go to the style option, give it a background color of black. Okay. And then we'll go to the advanced settings and then we'll give it a padding of 20 pixels all around. So the next thing we'll do, we're just going to come over here and drag our post, our product title and drop it here. Go to the style option, change the color to white and then align it to the center. And then for the typography, we're going to give it 30 font size to 18 pixel. Okay. So we're going to come back here and then we're going to select the product price. I will drop it right below the product title. And for the product size, we're going to give it the color, the price of the the product price. We're going to set the color to white. And then for the font size, we're going to give it same font as that of the title, 18 pixel, and then align it to the center. And then for the sale price, this is when your, this particular, if this particular product is on sale, then the price this is where you set the color as to what you want the price text to look like. So I'm going to set it to somewhat off-white. In as much as this uh, product doesn't is not on sale, other products are on sale, you set the on sale price there. Okay. Now for the typography, we're going to set it to same 18 pixel. Okay. So now that we've done that, we'll go to the advanced settings and then for the margin, we're going to set the margin to the bottom to be uh, minus 10. Okay. And we'll come back here and we're going to search for add to card as you can see there are two add to card this one and this one. i'm going to use this custom add to card because it's it's easy to customize quickly okay so for this custom add to card, i'm going to drag and drop it right below this price here okay and then i'm going to align it to the center and i'm going to come over here for the background i'm going to set the background color to ffb001 okay uh i'm just gonna copy this color out and then i'm gonna come back here instead of setting this i'm gonna use this for the hover so what i'll do is i'm gonna set the color here to be to be black and then give it a, a border type solid with a border width of two pixel and then the border color will set it to this color here and then for the border radius i'm gonna give the border radius 20 pixel so we'll have something that looks like this and that will go for the hover. And for the hover, we're going to give the hover background color, same color as that of the border. Okay, so when you hover, this is what you get. This looks wonderful. Okay, so now let's come back to this inner container here and let's unlink this. Now for the button, bottom, we're going to give it a pattern of 30 pixel. Okay, and then we're going to come to the style option and head to the border. And then for the border is we're gonna unlink this and give it a border to the bottom 20 pixel and then to the left 20 pixel as well. So we'll now have something that looks like this. Okay, we are not done. So the next thing we're gonna do is for this uh call to action image here, we're gonna come over here and then we're gonna go to the advanced settings and come down to the border, and then we're gonna give it a border, set the border type to solid, and then we're gonna unlink this and give it a border of two value two to the top two to the right and two to the left okay and then we're going to set the border color to same color as that of the button and for the border radius we're going to unlink this and give it a border radius of 20 pixels to the top and 20 pixels to the right so we now have something that looks like this and we hover you can see we have a hover effect and our design is already coming into shape so what we're going to do the final trick we're going to do is on this inner container here, we're just going to come down to the border and then let's set some border shadow to it. Okay. 
Now for the color, we're going to set it to solid. And then I'm going to paste the same color as that of the button here. Okay. So I'm going to come down here. For the vertical, I'm going to give the vertical value of 8. And then for the blur, I'm going to set the blur value to 0. So we'll now have something that looks like this. So you can see our uh, our product loop is complete. Product loop design is complete. So the last step we're going to do is to make it clickable. So for this title here, we're going to come down to the content. And then for the link, we're going to set it to uh, post URL. And also for the image, call to action image, we're going to come over here. Under the content, we're going to come down to this link here. And we're going to set it to post URL. And then we're going to come here. We're going to apply the link on the whole box because there is no button. So when you click on the image, it also takes you to the product page. So we're done with our custom product design. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to come here, click on update. And then we're going to click on save and back. And so as you can see, it has taken effect on our loop. Unlike what well, we created our loop using the team builder whereby we need to, you know, come over here, drag the loop widget, and then search for the the team, uh, the loop we've created using the team builder. However, in this method, it just applies immediately on that particular page, so which is a wonderful effect. So you can see, this is it. And you can notice that some of the uh, cards are longer than the other. The reason for that is the the title. You can see that this title is longer. And then it comes down. However, the loop widget comes with a setting whereby you can set equal height. So if you should toggle this on, it doesn't really change anything as you can see. So now what I've done a video, which I made mention of it in the part one of this series. Okay, so you can just, I'm also going to add that video link in the description of this uh, video. So you can assess it and then see how you can make this, adjust this. It's a little tweak that you can do to make all the cards equal height okay so we've come to the end of this tutorial i hope to see you in our next series that is the part three of this tutorial feel free to drop your comments feel free to uh, ask any questions suggestions and i'll do well to attend to them and if you're new to our channel please remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified first when i drop a new video and also give this video a thumbs up so thank you and see you next time Bye bye